Good morning. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, we are gathered today for the second Sunday after Epiphany. All the baptized have a calling in God's world. God calls not just pastors and deacons, but also the youngest child, like Samuel. Where we come from isn't important. It's where, or rather, to whom we come to that is important. Thank you for joining us this morning in worship. Uh, everyone is online, uh, but we are going to begin together uh, uh, remotely with our gathering song. Thank you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Holy house. 
Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see and was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you, you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and when he got, he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You have searched me out and known me. Lord, you have 
search me out, O oh Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You have certainly known me. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet yet unfinished unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. You have served me out and known me. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heaven opened up and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite the children of God to sit down. What would it take for you to follow me? Philip found his buddy Nathaniel, ran over to him. We found him. We met him. He's here, the Messiah. 
Moses and the prophets wrote about him. This day is hundreds of years in the making. God has not abandoned us. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Bipal had grand expectations of the Messiah. I mean, three out of four of the Gospels have lengthy beginnings on the origin story of Jesus. Two with nativity scenes and one being John with a very confusing poem of the word was with God, the word is God, and word and God, and a very lengthy. So, of course, the people of Judah had hopes and dreams and surely pondered about how this would come about. Surely, they thought, he would appear in or near the great city of Jerusalem, the site of political, economic power, religious authority, in God's own dwelling place in the temple. If not there, then at least some place to display grandeur or kingly authority, of course of which he had. In today's terms, maybe like Washington, D.C. or New York City, streaming on multiple platforms in high definition, maybe preaching from the center of a massive stadium surrounded by props in the entourage of beautiful people and, of course, backup dancers. Given the depth of this expectation, one might forgive Nathaniel for sounding like a disgruntled teenager full of bias reflecting the prevailing view while muttering divisive comments under his breath. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Who could imagine that God's anointed one could come from a place so distant from the center of power? A Messiah from Nazareth? In Galilee? Inconceivable. Even today, to hear that Christ may be found in a county store or the flyover zone of the country or maybe just the middle of nowhere, a bombed out city or even the lifted up on a Roman cross might take a minute to accept. God is not obliged or to be confined by Nathan or Nathaniel's or our limiting expectations. Indeed, it is the central claim of God's and John's gospel that the word became flesh and lived among us here in this place. I wonder how Nathaniel said that line of can anything good come from Nazareth? Was it like a teenager full of bias or was it full of grief? After having one's hopes dashed, I've been waiting so long, hoping so long, hoping that something different could happen. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? We don't know the answer. We don't know how Nathaniel said it. We know very little about Nathaniel that could help put his remark into the narrative context. He is not included in any of the synoptic lists of the Twelve. He appears nowhere else in the New Testament except for this episode and once again after the resurrection, where we learn that his hometown is Cana and that Jesus appeared to him and several other disciples while they were fishing. Whatever the beginning of Nathaniel's opinion of bias or exhaustion, Neither Jesus or Philip argues with him. Instead, Jesus remains nearby, and Philip simply invites Nathaniel to come and see. Apparently not a bad evangelism strategy. So when this guy Nathaniel, who has been nothing but negative so far, proclaims this overwhelmingly positive declaration of Jesus after just meeting him, what are we to think? What is going on here? The drama in this story counts on the fact that this character, Nathaniel, doesn't tend to act in a positive manner. 
He doesn't declare false positives. So if Nathaniel, of all people, confessed his faith in Jesus, you can trust him because he is not predisposed to give compliments. No, nor does his faith overcome suspicion about Jesus. Nathaniel is not one of those folks whose faith develops gradually. He is one who was also himself startled when the reality of Jesus snapped into place. There is something about that fig tree remark that made who Jesus is clear for Nathaniel. The reader does not get to be privy to exactly what changed Nathaniel's view of Jesus. What is clear is that the epiphany of Christ come to different people in drastically different ways. An epiphany of God allowed something new to snap into place for Nathaniel, and that newness changed his life. I've been Nathaniel before. Yes, I know the text. Yes, I know our values. But sometimes I can just be tired. I once had dreams. I thought we could change the world. Can anything good come out of Nazareth when all I've seen is exhausting? And yet, God wants to be in relationship with us. Jesus knows Nathaniel and invites Nathaniel to be known. The miracle here isn't making a loaf of bread into 5,000 loaves of bread, or walking on water, or any number of signs. It's God wants to be here among us, live among us, and know us personally. Lay down your bias, your exhaustion, your negativity. Jesus will not leave you, and greater things are in store. Amen.
As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation. God of fig trees and fertile soil, heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully. God of wisdom, give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplifts those on the margins of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle. God of compassion, you who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racial or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration, especially those on our prayer list, Adele, Sue, Millie, Sue, Dan, Pam, Mike, Kathy, Allie, Carol, Rusty, George, Trish and family, Brett, Andrea's great niece, Brian, Jaya's nephew, Capella, Megan, Kathy, Shirley, Connie and Jason, teens and families in crisis, and all those on our hearts. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mu mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace if someone is sitting with you, or write a letter or send a text to someone, letting them know that you're thinking of them. We move into our offering song. We are going to offer up some joy and thanksgiving in the song of Here I Am, because here we are.
Blessed are you, Holy One, for all things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table and wherever we are, that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose, in whose name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We move into announcements. You made it with us. Yay. Um, so if you have, are watching this, you will know that the uh, winter barbecue yesterday is canceled. Um, the annual meeting is going to be the last Sunday of this month. Uh, there still are some opportunities for food and fellowship with me. Please contract, can, contact Kendra for availability to RSVP. Uh, there's one on January 17th uh, at the Hadlocks and Beachleys, January 12th on the Warlerts, and January 31st on the Werns. Um, let's see. There are new bottle drop bags out there, so please come and grab your bottle drop bags. These proceeds go to the EDA Fund, which helps fund emergency assistance throughout Corvallis. We are trying to get people out of a bad situation, so if they have a medical bill that allows them to, that makes it unable so that they can pay a utility bill, we help people get back on their feet and not continual assistance. So this is a wonderful thing that we can do for the community for just a few bottles at a time. Um, we have a funeral coming up. Hal Bronner's funeral is on January 20th. It'll be at 10 a.m. Uh, in the sanctuary with a reception to follow. As with everything changing um, that is constant, uh, our Minister of Youth and Family uh, has felt the Spirit's call elsewhere and so will be leaving us. Kristen is going to be ending her time here uh, February 1st. We will be spending the time after worship on January 28th to celebrate her and all of the wonderful things that she has done throughout the years here. And then we will go to the annual meeting. So it's an extra reason to go that last Sunday and please give her all the thanks for what she has done over the past few years. Am I missing anything else? Uh, to prepare for the annual meeting, that email has gone up. There is also a couple of copies to, uh, that are outside the sanctuary for you to pick up. So once the roads are clear, then you can pick it up or you can print it out at home. Please receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.